What's up guys, Dom Matter here, and today we're going to be reacting to another Seth Zentach video. So it's been a little while since we've done a Seth video. When was the last one that we did? Uh, let me check real quick. The last Seth video was back in November, so yeah, it has been quite a while. So uh, this is the Matchless Kung Fu Review, Beggar Edition. So I'm guessing this is another obscure Seth game. I think the only one I've seen of him doing a like recent modern AAA game was uh, Starfield. Everything else is like some obscure shit you've never heard of. But anyway, link to the original video down below. Let's jump into it. Expansion. Immaculate Crack Rock. Domain <laughs> Expansion. Homeless Fist. Hey, hey, disciples. <laughs> Seth here. Let me tell you about a game that's transfixed and captivated me for the past many days. The Matchless Kung Fu is an immersive sim that shows what life would be like if every man, woman, and child was trained in the martial arts. That is to say... Uh, life would not last very long. This game <laughs> takes place in the genre of wuxia. This is Chinese sword fantasy fiction, but a little more grounded than some I've covered in the past. The game works like this. You play a world simulation where everyone has their own desires and motivation, which you expand by putting down plots of land. These are pre-made areas containing a challenge. If you finish an objective, you can place more land, and you keep going until, inevitably, a Shaolin master breaks your spine. You're not expecting- this, this game actually kind of seems pretty cool. Most of the games I've, I've seen him review, I'm just like, what the fuck is this shit? So far, I'm, I'm thinking this actually looks pretty good. Expected to win from the first or second try. The actions you took in a past life will influence the next through karma, and you're not expected to understand any of this. <laughs> I don't have to explain to you why I began my journey drop kicking roosters and fighting with a family dog. Nor do I have to explain to you this incredibly elaborate system of rock, paper, scissors that is combat because the <laughs> went over my head, but I've retained the knowledge non verbally. And finally, <laughs> despite being, at the time of this review, a complete demigod with perfectly harmonized morality. I can confidently tell you, I have no idea what's going on. For being the product of RNG, my first Chinaman turned out looking okay. My very first quest <laughs> was to beat the shit out of wine-stealing monkeys, only to find out animals can be tamed. Abilities vary between animals, but for the monkey, this was begging. The monkey can beg for money, which infuriates the local beggar, as I'm taking away from his local business. In this game, <laughs> beggar is a profession, and just like doctors operate clinics, beggars operate church. I mean, in real life, it's kind of a profession, too. Some of those people make insane money, right? Uh, there was a, a case in Toronto, in, in Canada, Oh, this would have been like back, and I want to say the early to mid two thousands, because I was a, I was a little kid at the time, and I remember it became like a huge news story because this girl in Toronto was basically a beggar by day. Turns out her husband was actually a doctor. She's like, he thought she was just at home like housewife. She'd go down to uh, like downtown near where like the sports arenas and stuff are, and she'd pretend to be homeless and beg for money. And she would make like tens of thousands of dollars a month as a beggar on the street because, you know, somebody throws you five, 10, 15 bucks, right? They just throw you a little bit of cash. But if you're doing that in like a really, really hot, like high traffic area where a ton of people are walking all day, you're going to make a ton of money. She was, she was making like a, like, like a good, like a, a, the amount of money you make, like a really good full-time job just being a, a basically a fake homeless person. I was driven away and had to beg downhill instead. Then I got a quest to deal with some bandits. No problem, I thought, until I saw they were two women who could kill just by breathing on me. Luckily, yeah, my objective was to defeat them, just burn down their camp. This was very easy because they took several naps while I was doing so, only stopping when yeah. I burnt down their mattress. So they left and started harassing the locals. As it turns out, one of the bandits had the charitable perk, which meant that she would rob the local store, beat up the owner, and donate all her savings directly to my monkey. I made yeah. <laughs> from the bandit monkey pipeline and I found the constant brawl to be very entertaining until it wasn't and the store owner was dead on the floor. I realized I had to do something or I was going to lose a lot more NPCs. I lured the two bandits into a non-lethal sparring competition, broke their strength, quickly rested and jumped them again before they could recover. This bumped up my reputation and I was offered a selection of different schools of martial arts. Naturally, I chose to join the drunken sect. Not only did I get a bunch of skills that are simple enough that even I can reliably combo, I also got a 
informed that I had a secret admirer. Who, may I ask? Well, the person telling me. And just like that, I had a significant other. She sleeps on the floor. <laughs> Sorry, honey. The bed is reserved for me and the monkey. As we lay together and pick lights out of each other's hair, our bond strengthens. Following cultivation tropes, you can attend auctions to bid on rare and expensive items. Every time someone makes a bid for an item or increases their bid, the other guests become more jealous. If you let this play out in the background in its entirety, everyone who went to the auction is now seething with hatred and will try to kill every other attendee. In this game, you don't get strong. <laughs> <laughs> that seems kind of like uh, not intentional. <laughs> like a bad idea. You're from fighting. You get stronger by connecting shapes in the right order to activate inner kung fu. In my case, however, uh, I got alcohol immunity. I didn't understand the Drunk value of this until I sat down for a drink and saw a small option to make a toast. I could forcibly drink someone under the table, and when they're passed out, I could kidnap their body and rob them blind. <laughs> which is exactly what I did for the next hour, until everyone was running around in sub-zero temperatures in boxer shorts. Putting down enough normal <laughs> plots lets you place special plots such as towns. Soon as I entered, two men started bickering because one had slept with the other's wife. Oh. I intervened against infidelity, but a little too strongly, because he was now dead. I sat down at the bar to continue my drunken robbery when the same woman who committed adultery tried to seduce me. Honoring my beloved, I rejected her advances. So she threatened to kill me if I said no. And she did, because she's got 12k vigor. So I reloaded <laughs> and tried to beg for forgiveness. Instead, she let me off lightly by breaking my legs. The irony of the situation is that she owned the town clinic and would help treat my crippling disability the next day. I lived a good life. I trained hard. And despite... This seems like a scam. Uh, she's out here scamming people, you know... It's like some mafia stuff. You break their legs, make them come to you to get it fixed. Dad, I am surrounded by sociopaths that could kill me on a whim. I hate this place. <laughs> I'm going to go parkour across water. Going far north in the map is how you get captured and imprisoned. This is not a bad thing. This is how you unlock your second and third character slots. As said before, you're not meant to win on the first try. Or rather, you're not the main character. The protagonist of this story is your ancestors. Quick briefing on power levels. Everything is about vigor, which is how much punishment you can take. No matter how good you are at finessing the combat and exploiting meridians, your starting character's vigor will cap off at around 2k. So for reference, at your absolute peak, you are half as strong as a giant toad. How do you <laughs> remedy this? Genetics. Much like a trailer park is much more of a gene pond than a gene pool, your choice- <laughs> Gene pond. <laughs> oh. This is like kind of a CK type thing where you're like you're breeding for better characters. Choice of partner has consequences on your child's pedigree. You need to choose the right China man or China woman to chintigrate into your lineage. <laughs> if you're the offspring of a sect leader, you're born with 2K extra vigor. That's nice, but we need to go even harder. There are many myths, many legends. In high school, we used to nipple cripple each other. If you're not familiar, that's where you grab both nipples and twist painfully, usually in the changing room when they're most vulnerable. Until uh, we we used to call it like a purple nurple. The craziest one I ever saw, man. Oh my god! It was guys on our rugby team. They we had like a, a new you know guy. Uh, fuck! I had a brain fart. Um, a rookie. We had, we had a rookie at our rugby team, and two of the guys held down his legs while another guy twisted and tried to pick him up. And he had like his nipple was like saggy afterwards. It was fucked up looking. It was wild. One of our friends told us that's how a kid got nipple cancer, because he got nipple crippled too often and it became a tumor. We knew the story was bullshit, but we were scared and we never did it again. Similarly, <laughs> there are tales of people hitting 30k vigor and I think I know how. Some call it intuition. I call it reading a guide on Steam. Karma are objectives you complete during life that allow you to take different blessings in the next. Our objective per Steam birthright requires the following. 30 lovers, 30 grudges, or a million gold. Gold is out of question, so I went with 30 grudges instead. For reference, the worst thing you can do to someone is destroying their kung fu. Understandably, beating someone so hard they forget how to move creates a lot of animosity. At first, <laughs> I was non-lethal and just battled people, stole their kung fu, and locked them in a cage. This got problematic very quickly. I would imprison someone's mother so their daughter would show up and start breaking the cage from outside, trying to rescue them. So, I had to knock her out, put her in another cage, only to see the mother try to break out from inside to rescue her daughter. Everyone oh started bonding over their shared predicament, became friends, and tried to make a prison break. <laughs> Eventually, it was too much, so I had to start taking heads. All I wanted was 30 enemies, but 
but it seems now I'm going to need 30 body bags. This was a problem because I couldn't keep track of the people I killed and their relations to one another. I accidentally killed off someone's parent, only to find out their daughter had 12k vigor and was chasing me across the land. I died oh, several God. times and had to reload. The only way I was going to survive was by friendship and paying the master of my sect a thousand gold to beat the shit out of her. As I <laughs> took ahead, I realized, why do I even need this karma quest when I have a small army that can finish the entire game? There are no words to describe the experience of combat. What even is the point of this game? Or is it just like an open end game? This, honestly, like it's, this game is like simultaneously seems very cool and very shit at the same time. Like just watching it, it seems like it's held together with fucking duct tape and glue sticks, but it looks like actually pretty fun that when your fights are stacked 20 against one except incredibly fair i thought i was invincible but i flew too close to the sun you see slowly over time my army kept taking internal injuries but their ai wouldn't let them go to a clinic for treatment and i didn't pay attention suddenly some of them died which caused their friends to blame me for their death which oh forced God. me to fight them but then they died and my other companions attacked me my failure cascade was out of control <laughs> and i died at the hands of my own men i thought i was girl boss of this empire but in truth it was nothing but the boss baby i looked back <laughs> in the footage to figure out exactly where it all went wrong and surprisingly it wasn't inflicted injuries no what happened was i ate shit to see what happens and i saw the animation and i thought it was really funny however my dysentery gave me a stack of poison gas which spreads from close contact my <laughs> army was exclusively in close contact so the cause of death of everyone and myself <laughs> He gave everyone fucking dysentery. Included was my own excrement. But it turned out I made enough enemies in this life that I finished my karma quest. Pristine Birthright gives you the single biggest power spike in the game, if you can actually use it. If I could figure it out, I'm sure you can too. In case you do this yourself, I found out I didn't actually need grudges, and I could have just marked 30 people as enemies. Turns out, force-feeding people shit, gouging out their eyes, and repeatedly breaking their legs was completely unnecessary, and says a lot <laughs> more about myself. My unscrupulous <laughs> actions would come to haunt me for my third character, as I start with ill fate, which means I'm more likely to be struck by lightning. I try to cheese the system by praying for rain and speed running life. Unfortunately, lightning only cooks you, so I tried dying to bandits. They refused to kill me as well. Instead, they put me in a cage and went to sleep. Occasionally, they would wake up and poison me before going back to sleep. This also <laughs> failed to kill me. Frustrated, I ran to the Forbidden Palace, which is this game's version of a government. This is staffed by people who are referred to as an incomplete person, who are missing their precious treasure. This is a very Chinese way of saying they lost their penis. I could go on to explain how <laughs> dynasties fought this would <laughs> so they're they're just eunuchs. prevent nobles and public officials from seizing power because they couldn't produce children. But I digress. Anyway. Yeah, it, it actually did not work. Uh, they would seize power, but it was, like I guess it depends on like what you know time period and culture you're talking about. But a lot of it was so that they wouldn't sleep with all the concubines. But yeah, part of it was also so they wouldn't create dynasties. Uh, but yeah, that didn't really work. A lot of them would still become very powerful, especially when you had like child emperors and stuff. I set fire to the palace, and I was promptly executed. And it was all for nothing, because my negative karma was still there. Also, I found out Groin Kick has a chance to permanently crush your balls. Do with this information as you will. Mm. So, I made my fourth and final character, Supreme Genetics. Excellent karma. And you know what he does with it? Nothing. Because I unlocked Beast Tongue and can now tame infinite monkeys. Now, I have complete monopoly on the entire begging sector. This <laughs> undeniably early access. The translations can range from English to absolutely esoteric, but the gameplay is so intuitive that I never felt like... I want to read what the absolutely esoteric. So intuitive that I never felt English to... The Emperor has the order today. The heroes are together to disturb the rivers and lakes. Payton has divided. The cracks are cracked. The major forces are their own selfishness, chaos, and even difficult in life. There are even more lingering, lingering in the rivers <laughs> and lakes, killing innocent and even chaotic order of the rivers and lakes. And everyone is in danger. The Emperor's pity from today will enter the Lord of the Lord today and will reestablish the order with the iron and blood. Anyone who does not follow the morals of the rivers and lakes, the traitors and the fate of the grass, the guards of the big inner must ride <laughs> to the law to use the wind of the Kuanglu Lin uh, Kin this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, God. Absolutely esoteric, but the gameplay is so intuitive that I never felt like I was missing out. There is one exception to this. It's called Verbal Duels. 
and they're completely insane. This <laughs> is the equivalent of an online debate, where the objective is to mentally break your opponent. Instead of vigor, you use spirit, and depleting someone's spirit will put them in hysteria, and hysteria can lead to death. This game lets you troll someone to death. It's really hard to say which single event in this sandbox broke me. Was it the time I went to the clinic for a broken leg, only for the doctor to forcibly throw me outside because it was one minute past his bedtime? Or was it my wife screaming at me for having an affair? As I have no option to explain to her that I have no relation to this giant black serpent. And it <laughs> intimacy. only of intimacy for me because I implanted it with a love parasite. Since writing these what? lines, my world got flooded. I tried to swim north and got eaten by a great white shark. This came out of nowhere, so it scared the shit out of me. This was the worst jump scare I've ever had. I got crinkles in my diapy and was very afraid. So I'm giving this game a zero out of 10. In all seriousness, if you're willing to put up with a lot of bad translation and want a sandbox where you can live out your power fantasy of killing everyone with your bare hands, then I thoroughly recommend it. For the price for asking, hey, I definitely got my money's worth. It's pleasant, it's charming, and there's a lot to explore that I haven't had the time to cover. As always, more content to come, so stay tuned. This video didn't take that long. Many of my videos take very long, and even longer as time went by. Decision paralysis corrodes every content creator. However, my autism has been cured. Thank you, Lexapro. And most of all, thank you, Allah, for your glorious blessings each day. I have a oh couple of this year. I got bills to pay. But I hope to make up for it with a garbage quality you know and expect. A warm thanks to the many members of a Merchant's Guild generously funding and bankrolling these videos. You're all truly wonderful. Have a good one. <laughs> oh my god. I, I actually want to play that game. Oh yeah, most of the Seth games I see him review is like the worst shit you've ever seen. And it's like, bro, how did you play this for like 160 hours? But this one actually seems like it would be pretty fun. Like this actually seems like it'd be a pretty fun game to play. I was, oh, that, I, I, I might download that and play it. But <laughs> it just seems so chaotic. It's like simultaneously like hodgepodge together and actually well designed. Uh, anyway, let me know what you think below. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.